camcorders, film cameras, and even cell phones that shoot video, <laughs> everyone can make movies. Filmmaking is the new garage band. This is Framelines, the show about people making movies right here in Ohio. Frame Lines is brought to you in part by Zabo Lights, the new LED lights for your production. Tape Central, providing your media needs. Production Partners Media, affordable media solutions. And grants from the Greater Columbus Arts Council. This is a special episode of Frame Lines, where we go in-depth with the 48-hour film project in Columbus, Ohio. We follow three different teams of filmmakers as they attempt to make a film from start to finish in 48 hours. Let's meet Casey Allen, the man who runs the Columbus 48 Hour Film Project. I'm Casey Allen. Uh, came in as producer of Columbus 48 Hour Film Project three years ago. And um, it's a job that I've really enjoyed. The 48 Hour Film Project is a, an event. It's an international event. Uh, there's 90 cities around the globe that do this. Teams get together, they have to have their own gear, their own people. They have 48 hours in which to write a script, film the script, edit it together, put a musical score behind it, and turn it in. And if they do it within that amount of time, they're eligible for prizes. You can make your own movie, and you can put it on a movie theater for the price of the registration, which is $155. There's nowhere else that you can make a movie and put it on the screen for that kind of money. The 48-hour film project kickoff is quick and full of excitement. They don't know what their movie is going to be about. They don't even know what style of movie they have to make. So when they come here, they draw a genre out of a hat. It could be science fiction, comedy, drama, road movie, buddy film, film de femme, which is a 48-hour film project uh, invention, uh, sci-fi. Some years they've had a superhero. There's tons of different things that they could do. And at that point, they've got 48 hours and a half hour to get it here. To get it here on a Sunday night at 7.30. If they're one second late, their film is ineligible to be judged. Still gets the screen, and it can be awarded audience prizes if it's very, very good. We've been fortunate for the last three years. The Gateway Film Center is a beautiful facility, gorgeous screens, the projectors are very nice, the, the, the rooms are clean, and they've been very, very good especially on the independent circuit here in, in Columbus. There's a lot of independents in Columbus that want to get their stuff shown. And fortunately, the Gateway has been very, very good at getting their stuff out here. And they've been very good to us as well. When you think about the awards for the 48, they're very much similar to the awards for just about any awards ceremony that you'd see, whether the Oscars or the Screen Actors Guild or whatever the case may be. You, you get cinematography, uh, best special effects, best soundtrack, best whatever, and you get certificates for these things. But in the case of some of the best films, like the best film of Columbus and then the audience awards, there's also grip packages and camera packages and special things that people don't own for themselves. The best film of Columbus, the judges get together and they kind of look at, at it and they talk about it and decide which one they think is the absolute best based on best script, score, I mean it's just hands down the best film and it's a difficult decision. But because of the work that goes into creating the best film of Columbus, they get some significant prizes. Um, first of all, they're awarded the best film, which means they automatically get an invitation to screen their film at Filmapalooza, which is kind of the culmination of the whole international project. All 90 cities around the world are there representing their films at Filmapalooza, so they get that. Uh, two years ago, uh, the 2008 best film went on to Cannes for the film festival there. And last year, they didn't go to Cannes, but they did get to have their trophy handed to them at Filmpalooza in Las Vegas at the NAB convention by Jason Reitman, who's the director of Juno, Thank You for Smoking, uh, Up in the Air, Oscar-nominated film. Uh, so that was pretty exciting for him. It was for me. It's like taking an entire film project that somebody would do like a Transformers movie and squashing the entire project into two days instead of nine weeks. Peter John Ross sits down with team leaders of three teams to talk about their experiences with the 48-hour film project Columbus. 
What drew you to doing the 48 Hour Film Project? It's a great competition. You know, you get to really compete with, I wouldn't really say compete either. It'd be, you get to compete in a contest, but you're along with friends. And everyone has a tendency to help each other out anyway. So you still kind of work as a team, but you all have your own individual teams. So it's a great community thing. We were kind of the, the ones that didn't have a home. Like I basically made a home and drew everybody in that wanted to come play and figured, you know, 150 bucks and we'll have a weekend together and if it turns out great, if not, still had fun. Jen? Oh, for, um, for the 48, the first one I did was uh, in 2006 and the reason why I did that um, particular project was I hadn't ever really done anything with video or film beyond what I'd done in school and um, I thought it would be fun to drive down to Cincinnati for a weekend and stay with people I'd never met before. What inspired you to want to um, form your own team for the Columbus one? Um, the very last minute I signed up and um, put together a team. I had no idea how I was going to do it, had no idea who was going to be on it. Um, just signed up and said three weeks from now I hope I find a team. That's kind of similar to what happened to me and I sent out a mass text and I was like we're making the team who's in and started getting replies back and I was like let's do it and I had a completely different take I had a team since January Jen talked me into it I think we wound up with 30 people for the 48 Jeez. what is it you could do to prepare before the actual 48 hour weekend what is it you know within the rules what is it did you do to prepare for it for me, I just put the right people in. I, at that point for the 48, everyone's a tool. You don't want one person in there that just does one thing and one thing only, unless it's really, really amazing and you know you're going to wind up using that. So you did have something like the city of Dublin? Uh, no, Hilliard. Hilliard. We had the city of Hilliard, the city of Hilliard. Um, one person connected me to another person who connected me to the, uh, Chuck Buck, the town trustee, who opened up every single door in the town. So if we wanted roads closed, we can have that. If we wanted to use the police or fire department, we wanted to use gear, wanted to use trucks. You know, they were willing and eager to help. So what did you do to prep for the we didn't have, before? We didn't even have a cinematographer by, <laughs> by draw time. <laughs> uh, we got really lucky. Uh, your intern, Alex, came on the team, and I think it worked out pretty well. Hmm. Jen, what did you do to prep? Prayed a lot. Uh, no, honestly, um, yeah, the Thursday before, uh, or I'm sorry, the Thursday after uh, registering, I flew to Los Angeles for a week, and um, I ended up talking to a guy, an old friend of mine, who um, said, yeah, I'll help you write this thing. He's, uh, he's done his own work out there. Um, so he's like, okay, yeah, I'll help you out. And then after that, it was just a matter of finding everybody else. So I sent out messages everywhere I could. Um, as it turns out, um, a lot of the people I worked with found me. Annie, um, who shot the thing, actually brought aboard a heck of a lot of the team members that we use, like our editor. Um, and um, I mean, a lot, Kyle, our sound designer, you know, too. So it was just, it was very, very random. Let's get into a little bit about, you know, pulling the genre. I mean, were you prepared for the genre you got? No. What did you get? Comedy. And when I pulled comedy, I knew it was my biggest Achilles heel. And I had a great crew. I had a great cast. And everyone was behind it, so I knew they were talented enough. But I know it's my Achilles heel. Shane, what did you pull? Uh, we pulled drama. And I was stoked because I didn't want to pull horror. I didn't want to pull comedy because everybody knows me as the horror guy. And a couple other people on the team are horror filmmakers. And the rest of the team was pretty well comedy. What did you pull, Jen? I got silent film, which was very, very fortunate because we didn't have anyone to do audio. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of happy about that. I, I couldn't have got something that I would have been better prepared at, at tacking this year than that, I don't think. All right. So tell me a little bit about what was the screenwriting process like for you? Aaron Sinclair wanted to, he wanted to do it. He wanted responsibility for it, which was great. I backed him up wholeheartedly. I talked him, talked him into having his girlfriend, Corey, work with him kind of as an assistant, kind of keep, help keep each other on track. And um, he had an idea beforehand, of just a general thought he had earlier in the day. And we wound up taking that idea and, and twisting it and turning it to come up with Sam I Am. So it was, it, was, it was pretty easy for me. I just let him have it, would just 
read the script accordingly, make changes as needed. So, what do you guys do? <laughs> uh, I'm a hip hop artist. <laughs> Shut up! Are you serious? Yeah. Heard Run DMC? Well, prove it. <laughs> yeah! Bust a rhyme! Dog! Come on! Four. Relate, not like I was before. A man on a mission, wanna give you more. Implore with the score, you adore. Sam, I am, boo, you can't ask for more. Smooth like honey on you drip. Sticky sweet trick to make you flip on a dime. Your mind in time with my rhyme. Peace out. I split my writing team. Uh, part of my writing team was with me at the draw. Um, the other Part of the writing team was at what became home base, which is where we were shooting. That way, once we made the draw, we texted what the required elements were and the genre back to home base, and they were brainstorming. And then as we drove back, we were brainstorming. Um, by the time we got home, they had two complete ideas, and so did we. So we had four ideas the second we stepped out of the car to we stepped out back, um, the people that were at home base kind of pitched me the idea. I pitched them the idea. We wound up going with one that they had come up with uh, at home base. Um, Robert Four was most, I think he was the one most responsible for the idea. And we decided to go with it. So talk about your writing process a bit. Like, wh How did that go for you? Did you do it more as a team or did you narrow it down? Um, basically, I told Bo um, out in Los Angeles. I called him up, said this is what we got. I said come up with something. I want a mad scientist and a robot. I don't care. So he, came, he ended up coming up with a script, sent it back. This is an outline. Um, and we worked from there. I did storyboards around it. Um, didn't really have a formal script. We basically worked off of storyboards on a wall, just drawing and revising as, as we were changing along the way. So how much sleep did you get the first night, Friday um, night? I didn't sleep at all. Not at all? Oh, no. <laughs> we started shooting shortly after midnight. And uh, just because we had, we had given ourselves a lot of time, we had planned to shoot starting at like 9 a.m. on Saturday, but the script was workable. Like, the script was done, essentially, by midnight. Um, so Alex was there. We were going to use Alex's apartment for a scene. Uh, Rachel showed up. I was there. Cassie was there. I wasn't about to waste the next nine hours sleeping. And we shot the first two scenes... Uh, got them wrapped up before before sunrise, and then I went. We went back to home base, took a nap, had breakfast, and we were already ahead of the game. Mm. TJ, uh, about seven hours. Uh, two hours on the first night, two and a half on the next, and some time in the middle of post while everyone was tying stuff up. I passed out somewhere. <laughs> so, what do you think was your biggest challenge in the shoot? It was all kind of complex overall. You know, get, getting everything in, getting everything coordinated. I, we had so many people in, um, there was a lot of logistics. So it's a lot of, okay, out of who here, who can do this, who can do that, who can come up with this solution. And it's a lot of team building. We had uh, eight, nine people that were brand new, never been on a movie set before. Taking them by the hand, teaching them what to do, helping them out. That's actually what I think is really neat about TJ. For two years in a row now, you've brought people on that have never been on a film set right. before. Mm -hmm. right. So what was your biggest challenge with your piece? Defined roles. Um, we had people calling cut and action that weren't me. Um, people that were uh, kind of stepping on other people's toes. You know, well, we're going to do this shot next. And Cassie would turn around and be like, no, we're not. We're doing this. This is what we're doing. So uh, so how did you deal with that then? Just let Cassie deal with it as AD? Yeah. <laughs> she basically told that person to go sit in the other room. I don't know of any delicate way of saying this. Well, just say it, Dad. I have two months. To? To live. 
I know what you're going to think as soon as you start leaving here. It'll pop into your head. <laughs> How much will I get? Here's the deal. You get yourself cleaned up, and I'll put you back in the will. Starting today, nothing gets smoked, snorted, or shot into your body. <laughs> you do that for me, for you, and I'll give you the world. All you need is one of these. Rachel, what's going on? Why Dad call? He'll tell you himself. So what was your biggest challenge on, a, on the shooting? Um, well, um, we were shooting in a space that I had been renting out um, as a studio space. Um, for about a month before the 48, had gotten it already. Uh, we're working through it, everything was going fine, and um, we had one breaker go on us. We bought a coffee and uh, plugged the coffee pot in to get them a pot of coffee, because I knew they'd be gone all night working on this. Um, and we fried the electricity in the entire building just with a coffee pot. That's what put it over the edge. So um, <laughs> fortunately, I have, or I had a great team. Um, Everyone just kind of very peacefully, very quietly, opened up all the garage doors, moved our cars around so we could shine the lights in, packed everything else uh, that we were in need of up, and we moved to my 800-square-foot uh, apartment. And we proceeded to set up the green screen and film the rest of the, the, the short. So um, that's where most of the, the cutting um, out of a lot of the different... Um, Ambition. Scenes, yeah, the, the ambitious mm -hmm. scenes. I mean, there's a lot you can do with the green screen, but you know, it's 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So, um, so basically, um, recovering from that was pretty much the worst of the entire weekend. Uh, but I mean, had that not happened, we would have probably spent the rest of the night shooting. I think we got everything else that we needed in about three hours. And during that time, I got a whole, I think it was hour and 15 minutes, maybe asleep, okay. <laughs> which was great. <laughs> So now let's talk about editorial. <laughs> TJ? No, editing was really great. Um, Who was your editor? Chris Ro Westfield edited my 48. And everything went pretty smoothly on that end. Um, there was only some small hitches. And again, it was mostly the comedic timing. Because it's, you know, timing it for everything else. Um, you do have a little leeway. You can go and you know, draw something out a little bit longer, shorten something up, and you're usually okay, but with comedy, if you're not hitting that mark right on, it falls flat. Um, music was done. Um, we had a great composer uh, who was working offset. We had just, um, we had a rap scene in our video, uh, which was really neat. You know, older white gentleman rapping. And uh, that was a bit of a challenge. How much time did you spend on your edit? Um, we were editing from uh, noon on Saturday. As stuff came in, we would just offload off the cameras and m mix and play with sequences. Was your editor on site, or did you have an editor at a different location? We had the editor on site. Cool. Um, he was sitting at a table. I think I had the camera right next to him. You know, we're shooting. I mean, everybody's there, and he's there editing, and people are standing next to him, you know, and it almost like he didn't even see him. You know, he was so involved and you know, and would take his, his phones off and make comments to people. And so he was there, a very integral part of our crew, which, which was great. Your editor was not on site. Right. Our editor, um, he has his whole editing system set up in his apartment. And I didn't know that until the day before. Like, I thought we would have him on set. So we had actually set aside a room. Paul, just bring your stuff over whenever. I'm here the whole day. And he goes, oh, no, I've got the whole thing set up at my house. Just have somebody run me the tapes. Okay, I guess that's how it's going to be. Um, and that was, I was really nervous about that. So we were sending runners to get him the tapes. The first time I saw edited video, uh, we were halfway done. Um, I was the runner. Um, we had hit kind of a lull where some people had to leave and we couldn't shoot. And I said, you know what, I'm going to head over to Paul's house and see what he's got done. Everything we had run him up to that point, he had already laced together. And he said, you know, you might want to reshoot this. Um, if you could, you know, 
I was reading in the script, and if you could do this, like gave me some notes on the script even, um, some helpful things that he would like to do. Like get a close-up of this. Yeah, or, or uh, you know, get a cutaway or a reaction shot. And then we were able to go back and shoot some more of like some reaction shots and I think we not halfway reshot one scene um, just because it's what Paul asked for and we had the time to do it and the people were there so in a way he kind of kept us moving there wasn't really that lull that we thought was going to be there he was like well if you've got time do this and we had the time the first cut was nine and a half minutes and within an hour he had cut that down into the required time and he had asked for a couple voiceovers so we got those and I mean we were we had full picture wrap ready to turn in about 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday let's talk about your editing process. oh Jesus Christ <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really I felt bad um, uh, when we had shot everything I wanted to play a little bit with motion and I wanted to shoot everything with my actors moving substantially slower than they would in real life because it was kind of a surreal cartoony feel that we were going for and I wanted it to look like it had been um, I don't know almost like um, a film kind of hand you know hand wound you know thing I wanted I wanted to very like vary the timing here and there so we shot everything slow and the intent was to speed it up and kind of emphasize certain points of the motion so um, you know like maybe when he smacks or he swings you know it can go slower and you know for emphasis or when um, um, when motion can be you know faster for comedic timing okay we, we can play with that a little bit um, he was left with about three hours to edit it in the end and that's um, we ended up submitting it late after I had watched what we had turned in and I realized that the edit that we had given them didn't give my editor time to properly do his job and it didn't do my team any justice so I said you know what I'm not happy with this editing we ended up submitting late over the editing screening then what did you feel about the overall quality of the films that screened this year and tell me a little bit about what it was like to screen you what it was like to sit with an audience with your movie like how often do you get to sit in a movie theater and watch your movie on the big screen I was terrified I think that was probably um, completely nervous completely terrified um, saying hey you know we directed this and this is the first thing that you know I've led a large group of people in actually completing. Yeah, that was that was mortifying. What was it like seeing your movie on the big screen? I always like seeing my name on the big screen. I'm an egomaniac. You know? <laughs> as soon as Shane Howard pops up, I get the little smirk going. It's great to see everything come together and know that like, I was like, I did that. Like, I put that together. Um, it was just a really special, special feeling to see it screen, for one, and uh, to have people enjoy it. Um, some people that I really respect in this town came up afterward and said, you told a hell of a story. And that meant a lot. I put up my movie. I watched it. I enjoyed it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's usually a disaster when I walk in there. I can watch everyone else's, but when my name comes up, I just want to curl up into a little ball and cry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess I just don't have that kind of ego. 
I, I like it. I was very proud of my actors. No, I was very. I'm, I'm very <laughs> proud of my actors. But what do you mean you don't have that kind of ego? No. It, <laughs> A, a, a lot of where's that, it, TJ Cooley and what have you done to him? No, a, a lot of that's a front. I mean, I I want to put my my movie out there, but I'm very proud of my actors. I'm very proud of the people that worked on it. My goal for the 48 was just to really have a good time. You know, even in a group of people that I know very little about and I have never had um, contact with or never spent a substantial amount of time with. Um, Sometimes those people are ridiculously dedicated and can drag your tired ass through a night that you don't think you can, you know, really, I mean, keep your eyes open for it, let alone, you know, produce a piece of work out of. Um, I'm really proud at some of the amazingly talented people I got to work with that weekend. I mean, it was just completely a learning experience for me. Um, first time out as a team leader, um, first time seeing something of this scale screen in front of a lot of people. Um, I mean, it was probably the best experience I've had in years. And uh, by the end of the weekend, I mean, we were all a family. It was cool. I, everything went smooth. I mean, it just, you plan for all the contingencies. You plan for all the things that are going to go wrong. You plan for all the things you can't even dream that might go wrong. And you put the right people in the right places. And you pull the genre and you make a movie. That's pretty much the 48 for me. Something I usually never get to say, that's a wrap. See you next time on Framelines. <laughs>